Good evening, ghouls and fiends, and welcome to a rare bonus edition of the Ministry of Horror. Uh, I am your host, Tez, and joining me once again is The Gruff. That's right. I'm here again. I'm back again. Uh, I'm glad to be back on. How's it going, Graf? You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, got a bit of a stinking rotten cold at the moment, just in ah. case you can tell. But um, apart from that, all good. Just life is just smashing me oh. left, right, and kind of centre. Just work, 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 work. Life, personal life, it's non-stop. So uh, yeah, um, it's the first time I've been on for a while, isn't it? The show, and I'm not always able to join. The live chats but i always listen back to the podcast so i'm quite looking forward to this uh it's always appreciated man and in in amongst that you know busyness of life and you know work and uh life and everything <coughs> you've been able to get down to the cinema i have um i have actually i've been to the cinema twice in the last two three weeks is which is probably the most i've been in the last three years so oh wow what was <laughs> um what was the other thing that you've seen uh, you know that big uh, Marvel film to do oh. with the claws and the ribbon. <laughs> oh, I loved it. <laughs> little, I loved a, that. Li a little movie, a little independent movie. Just a little independent. Um, but what we what we're here to do is uh, we're going to discuss a film that I reviewed uh, on on last week's show, and I've since then gone to see it a second time, and I actually think I might have even I might have enjoyed it even more. The second time we're going to be discussing specifically it's not like a review show but we're going to be discussing alien romulus but this is full spoilers um it is a film that i found i went into it knowing as little as possible because i generally try to do that but to then discuss the film even the opening 10 minutes or so is a big reveal and so it's difficult to go into what I enjoyed about the film and what I maybe didn't enjoy without discussing things that could be seen as major spoilers. Um, so if you haven't seen the film, you don't want anything spoiled, maybe put this podcast on on hold, watch the film and then listen to this. But if you don't mind spoilers, if you have seen the film, me and Gruff are going to get into the weeds with Alien Romulus. Yeah, I mean, if you haven't, you know kind of seen it personally in my opinion i would say stop it and make sure you see the film first but yeah you know, i'm not massively into spoilers myself i don't it's not the end of the world but i must admit i was really you know kind of over the moon for this film so i did try and avoid everything so and i'm glad i did let's well, let's jump into just like the start of the film so the 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 marketing did a, did a good job but the marketing didn't so much go into to, the timeline aspects so this film is set between the first and the second film so between alien and aliens there's that 57 year gap or thereabouts between between the two films um what was your kind of reaction seeing how this film sets up you know taking that moment from the end of the prior well from the end of the first film and the chronology um alien uh, well, I mean, like I say, I, I kind of avoided um, everything, uh, you know, kind of apart from a few trailers. So I did pick up at some point that it was kind of set between the original and Aliens. Um, but I didn't have any idea when exactly and how it was going to work. So I, when at the start of the film, when they're flying through the wreckage of the Nostromo, mm. I believe it's called, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I thought that was actually pretty cool, to be honest, because um, I know the original film is considered a classic. Personally, out of all of them, I would say it's slightly above Aliens. I think I okay. prefer Alien slightly. Um, okay. So I really thought that was pretty cool that it was taking place like that, rather as opposed to some of the other films. Timelines are all over the place, aren't they? And mm. so um, I thought that was a pretty cool little opening that when they're flying through. Um, I actually had a bit of, I wasn't too sure exactly what was going on with what they pulled into the ship, to be honest. So we would get to that. Maybe you can explain that to me a little bit, because I didn't quite get what was going on with that. 
So the way that I kind of looked at that and with something with the aliens, I guess, life cycle that was introduced in this film a bit later on, I kind of thought that that was an interesting way to show what the kind of the alien organism is like capable of. Because I guess if you think about like uh, insects that, um, you know, when a caterpillar or whatever cocoons itself to then become a butterfly whilst this was a butterfly let's say it's in its kind of final stage in the first film i kind of looked at it as maybe like a preservation sort of thing like it had kind of cocooned itself because we see that they're able to make these kind of structures in like the later films more so where they hook people up to the walls and you kind of almost think how have they all of a sudden made all the walls like look like that kind of alien you know goopiness and obviously yeah, the aliens always, yeah and the aliens always dripping stuff anyway so i kind of just thought that once it had been shot out of the airlock in in the first film that maybe there's been some sort of like self-preservation thing and i think one of the characters who I was a bit iffy on, um, and we'll get to them, said something about, like, food and oxygen aren't, aren't yeah, like, first right. requirements for this organism. I thought that was kind of like a way of explaining that when they caught it, it could have been out there for quite a while, but it had basically gone into, like, almost like a hibernation. Hibernation, yeah, that's... That, that was kind of the gist of, you know, kind of what I was getting. Maybe everyone else got that and I was just a bit slow. <laughs> but right. I, um, I kind of got that's what it was, but I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't, uh, you know, kind of misinterpreting stuff. So, Well, I think that, like, just straight off the bat, seeing like, the, the, like the setting and the kind of aesthetics, I just thought, okay, we're taking Alien seriously again because it just had that, the vast openness of space seeing you know the technology looked like it was similar to alien where you know sometimes when you get these like legacy sequels where there's modern technology they look amazing but you sort of think well this looks far more advanced like kind of i guess with prometheus everything is looks incredible that. That. Yeah. yeah but then if you think it's just it's it this is meant to be many 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 decades earlier than alien and everything looks really retro and alien but looks really high tech here yeah, that's that's kind of the. I think that. I mean, obviously, we're not here to talk about those films, but no. um, those films have got their problems. They're not perfect, but um, you know, kind of for me, that's what one of the things I didn't like about it was like they were over kind of juiced and you know over kind of stylized and yeah. everything shiny and. Whereas this was a return to kind of like the original, isn't it? Where it's everything's kind of dark. It's really kind of dank yeah moisture you know kind of dim gloomy yeah that's cool it was a real return to tone wasn't it yeah i i guess it's also cool. another thing that i really kind of loved and, I, and I, it made me think of blade runner and i hadn't put the connection that apparently ridley scott had said that his alien and blade runner he considers them part of the same universe because I always forget Ridley Scott did Blade Runner. But when we get yeah. the the opening on the uh, mining camp, I can't remember the name of it, with uh, where we're introduced to Rain and Andy, like just that setting, I just thought, this is one, it really kind of grounds you as a viewer into like the world where these humans are kind of coming from. But I also thought that oh, we're actually getting a better understanding of Wayland Yutani and how kind of how how little they kind of care about about humanity. Um, I found that really interesting, just kind of seeing that you've got all these people working in mining colonies, parents dying from lung disease, and you've got the kids there who are just like, well, what life is this? There's no sunlight. You, I thought there's a really effective way in a short space of time to get you to uh empath emphasize empathize empathize with the characters because you see their world and you see the situation and think jesus yeah i mean i think like you got to see uh or no 
I guess it is kind of sin, but you get to kind of feel the vibe about how kind of bad and evil the corporation or the company is. Um, mm. More in that, what, 15, you know, kind of 20 minute scene and you're doing it every other movie in the series because, like, obviously we're told from Alien onwards that they're bad. It's to do with, you know, kind of weapons. Um, they're a horrible company to work for. They're bad. But you don't ever really actually kind of see anything you're not actually told anything no anyone else other than pretty much ripley saying oh yeah it's a bad evil kind of company yeah and this is the first you time got... yeah yeah i i thought that was quite cool like it adds a lot more to kind of like the universe than any other thing has in the past so that's mm. cool yeah definitely definitely and like I you know I I quite like this group of characters. I mean, there was one, and I guess his character was written to be loudmouth and annoying because he kind of works as like an antagonist oh, yeah. to Andy. But Bjorn did my head in. Yeah, he was. I he was he was actually quite irritating and annoying, wasn't he? But like you say, I guess he was meant to. He was kind of written that way, but he he just came across as a dick almost straight away, didn't he? So um, yeah. Like it, it's straight away with um, the character Andy, like you straight away when he's kind of saying all these comments and everything to him, you kind of feel really kind of sorry for him straight away. He's just like, leave him alone. Why are you being such a dick to Andy? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's like, horrible. I think Andy, uh, I think played by David Johnson, I thought he was brilliant in this. Like both Rain and well, Andy. He was, yeah. He was incredible. Mm. And there was something on the rewatch that I didn't pick up on at the time but it made sense for one of the things that I wasn't a massive fan of later on. And that is that Bjorn multiple times calls Andy bitch. So I think yeah, that yeah. is meant to have been why he said what he said, which we'll get to later on. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we'll fast forward. They, you know, they, they go onto this, this mission to try and get off planet, go into this uh, space station that they've located, which should have, um cryostasis chambers on there and we get our introduction to the gravity cycling system which i thought was really quite interesting for uh for later on in the film but what this does is it kind of bridges the gap as to what has gone on in this area with a bit of dialogue which we get a little bit later on i'm jumping ahead but we do also see what initially looks like the remnants of almost like Bishop, like an ode to Bishop, because there's an android that's been ripped in half and all of this uh, destroyed flooring from, from acid blood. But, and I'm jumping around a little bit here, but this is one of the things that I just, I, I just, I still don't really know how I feel about it. And that was the introduction of Rook, which had a kind of a sound alike of Ian Holm, who's no longer with us. But it also had this kind of, I don't know if it was like CGI and animatronic of Ian Holmes' face, who played Ash in the original Alien. How did you feel when you first saw this kind of version of, of Ash, even though it's a different character, but it's obviously got his appearance? Um, so I have actually watched the original uh, yesterday afternoon so literally like a couple of hours earlier than i went to watch the film mm. um and like i said before i didn't have any idea that he was that you know they we're going to use this ian home likeness um but having watched the original film and then watched that <laughs> when i saw him i was shocked to say the <laughs> least but i don't know if i'm being too harsh or not regardless of what i kind of think of about the use of it they could have done something else maybe but do you think that the CGI was just awful yeah. on him? Or am I just being really... Is it because I saw the original no. live version earlier? Because I thought his face, it looked really bad, I thought. It really took me out of it. Well, this is why I wasn't sure if... I wasn't sure if there was, like... Um, if there was animatronics or if it was just purely bad CGI. Because we've had that kind of thing before in... I think it might have been Rogue One or one of the Star Wars films where they brought back yeah. uh, Peter Cushing. Um, yeah, that's right. And and that and that was one of those things where it was like, I mean, okay, it looks all right, but it's just a bit weird because it's a dead 
and a dead actor and i'd kind of think what i'd prefer in these situations and not that i like to give this film too much credit um but one of the high points from halloween kills <laughs> not that we can go a show without talking about halloween <laughs> was the loomis lookalike because that was a situation you have an actor who looked they'd obviously had some did some makeup and whatnot and had another voice actor but he looked pretty close to donald pleasance's loomis and i think that's much better to just have someone else play the role because there seems to be this thing these days where roles don't really kind of get recast it's like just keep keep bringing out the same actor until we can't and then now we'll just cgi them in and i think i'd have if they're going to go this route i'd have much preferred have a look alike rather than i don't know if it was animatronics or just really bad cgi but it didn't look good yeah um i mean i haven't seen rogue one for quite a while no um i don't remember peter cushing in my opinion i don't remember being so shocked with how you know kind of bad it looked when i watched it originally um but yeah i, I don't know there was something about that so that's why i was saying i don't know if it's me am i that maybe you're right maybe it's part animatronic part cgi and it's kind of meant to look like that but uh android from the original film ash he doesn't look like he's with, made with animatronics he's just a normal person obviously yeah yeah he, because he was acting and he's not alive now so i know that was a very i kind of get it on paper it sounds really cool um yeah but it i don't know that that to me i think personally is probably the, one of the only major things i wasn't too sure of in the film there's something about it like straight away i could when he's kind of he's twitching and his mouth's moving it looks very jerky as well as having that uncanny you know kind of baddie look to it so yeah. it makes it look quite weird i thought there was something not quite right about that <laughs> no it was it, that that was that was one of my few kind of things that i was just not i don't know not necessarily like i mean i have conflicted feelings about that kind of practice of using someone that's deceased's face but yeah I, I, it's the the animatronic kind of look well as you know you made a very good point because obviously it was previously played by an actor who looked like a, a a human then it was revealed only through the you know when he gets destroyed that he was a he was a robot um but that you know he does give us a good i mean his character he has some good lines of dialogue that kind of play back oh, to yeah, the original definitely. films and we guess is 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 quite a good um antagonist i think in this and especially the whole andy is this like kind of damaged android and to get access he has to be given this upgrade using like this little chip like i really like those sort of little like kind of almost little usb stick tech yeah. um, approaches because it all looked quite practical it all looked you know, even when they're plugging in Rook to the computer, it doesn't all look like newfangled, insanely advanced tech. It looks like, we'll just get this cable, you plug it in here, and it looked like, okay, that seems plausible almost. Um, so, from this point, we get the facehugger attacks, so and so forth. How did you feel with, like, the facehuggers in this film? Because this is probably the most we've seen in terms of like movement and whatnot of face huggers in i guess any of the films they've always had quite small shocking roles but in this there's quite a few moments like how did you feel they came across oh i loved that i thought it was brilliant um i was kind of hoping from like a few kind of clips of the trailer that i've seen um but, you know kind of they were going to be really um freaky and kind of scary because i mean let's kind of be honest they are freaky and scary yeah um even if you watch the original when you watch the original even then they're just disgusting design um i thought that was really cool i loved a lot of kind of like the scenes where um they're in the area with the face huggers and they're kind of under you know kind of like the water mm. um and then there's people like oh there's kind of something in here pulling them under and they're lurching at them and 
some of the shots with the I don't know what you would call it. Is it a proboscis? The, oh god, yeah, the um, thing that comes oh, out. Some of, them. of that. Yeah, is, that was horrible. <laughs> some of that looks really inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling it trying to pull it off like Jesus Christ. <laughs> um I know, you know, kind of Giga was into his screen, I kind of yeah, um, adult imagery, wasn't he? So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a. Uh, it was a bit full on. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was like Jesus Christ. But yeah, that was that was scary. Um, I mean, that film I would say that you know, kind of scene or those kind of scenes in the film maze, you know, kind of face huggers even more scary than they've ever been. Yeah, I oh, definitely, I'd agree with Personally. that. Definitely. Um, we then. Jumping ahead, we get the first uh, infection. We also get a new approach to trying to get a face hugger off. Obviously, it was a little bit too late at this point, but I like that approach of basically trying to freeze it. It's then no longer able to strangle the the host, so you can then pull it off. So I thought, okay, that's showing something new. Obviously, it didn't work in this instance, but that was a, an evolution. And I guess another... Yeah. Another evolution that um, that we kind of got in the life cycle, which made sense because I think it's in the first Alien we see the shedded skin um, because the, first, the alien's first sort of shown as the chest burster and it's this little tiny alien. And then when we next see it, there's like this shedded skin on the floor and this enormous thing. What I liked in this is we kind of got like a... the almost like in, not incubation period because that's when it's in the person but we got the next step and it almost gets birthed again on this like wall vagina thing oh right so i like my memory is really bad so i wrote down some little notes that i was going to talk about that i had could and one of the notes that i have in front of me says wall vagina yeah um, <laughs> Oh, I'm glad I'm not the only one that thought that. <laughs> Briefly, quickly though, before we do go on to that, yeah. regarding the freezing, so um, I, I'm not sure if it was just like a little connection between that film and the original, because they do mention freezing, you know, kind of like the face I got on the original film. Okay. Don't they, with Kane. So when Kane has it on his, you know, kind of face, I think it is, I can't remember the character's names now, <laughs> I should have seen it. Um, Ocker, I think. I think he mentions okay, yeah. to Ash that, you know, kind of they could maybe try to freeze it. And I think Ash just kind of hooks it off. Um, so I yeah. thought that was, it's probably me reading more into it, but I was like, maybe that, you know, kind of could have worked, but Ash just kind of talked it off on the original film because obviously he's trying to keep it on Kane's face. Yeah. But I yeah. thought that was a cool, cool little kind of callback. I, need I don't to... know if it was intended that way. I mean, quite possibly. I mean, I've I've not seen the original in in a little while, um, so that would make sense. That definitely would make sense, and I, I wouldn't put it past it to be a callback because that's one of the things that I totally didn't mind for the most part with this film. But there have been some complaints in the um, the vocal yeah. minority of the internet. Like, how how did you feel when it came to overall? Basically, the film has various, um, I'm not going to say like connections because there, there's moments that do connect to some of the films that I was quite surprised about. But in terms of like callbacks, whether it's dialogue or whether it's particular actions, this film's been referred to as like maybe a greatest hits entry in the series. Like, is that something that you enjoyed or did it bother you at all? Um, no, I mean, to you know, kind of be honest with you, um, I thought it was handled pretty well. Like, uh, my, like I say, my only real issue, callbacks wise, you know, um, kind of thing was to do with Ash, which we've already spoke about. Um, mm. Wasn't too keen on that. Um, and there was one, you know, kind of line of, um, at the end, at the end of the film, which is probably the same one that you said we were going to get to, regarding the word bitch. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That one. That one. I thought it was a bit too much. We'll get to that. Um, but, I mean, apart from that, personally, in my opinion, I thought it was handled really well. Um, yeah. Because um, I thought, um, like, there were quite a few little callbacks and they're cool little things to the previous films, but I don't think anything was, like, handled too over the top in that way, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. I, I, 
personally, I, I thought it was pretty cool. A lot of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, agreed. And um, I think like the only kind of callback that I'd have liked, and it was one of those things where I was trying to avoid spoilers throughout the weeks before the film came out. But there was just one thing that I just I kept googling because it's one of my favourite introductions in the whole film series. I think it's been severely underutilized since, and I just kept googling, is the alien queen in Romulus? Now, we don't s we don't see an alien queen, but there is one moment where I just wonder, was there potentially a brief glimpse? And this could be me completely reading too much into it. But there's a moment when they first sort of go towards the nest that they see is the nest and then they're about to leave and um the chap tyler his his sister um sort of crying and he runs into the nest you get this oh, moment yeah, yeah. where you can hear some of the screams of like the xenomorphs and i'm sure one of them sounded more like the alien queen you get a very brief glimpse of like a face uh, an alien face close up sort of swinging around and it just i don't know it's a very brief moment. It sort of almost looked like it might be the longer face of the Queen, but I think I'm probably just clutching at straws here. Were you disappointed that there was no Alien Queen, or do you are you not fussed with the Alien Queen? Um, so I actually think the Alien Queen's really cool, as as you know, kind of well as you do. I do really like when they have the Queen in films, but I'm not going to lie. Um, that never even occurred to me until you mentioned it, right? Oh, <laughs> that the okay. Queen wasn't in the film. Uh, so, yeah, I never even, you know, kind of thought of that. That okay. never occurred to me at all. Not at one point did I think, oh, at the end of the film, I reckon we're going to see the alien queen. It didn't even occur to me. Um, okay. So I think that just goes to show one of them people, when I watch a film and I really enjoy it, I just get so, you know, kind of into it. I didn't really, I just was along for the ride. No, yeah, that's fair. I mean, I, I think um, I think for for me it was because aliens, seeing aliens at a young age, that was the moment that always imprinted on me. And then seeing Alien Resurrection, because that was the first of the films when it yeah. came out as new, that I was able to then kind of not, not see in the cinema, I was still, you know, a bit young, but got it rented on, on video. And then I saw the Queen in that and I was like, oh yeah, the Queen's in this for all of five minutes before it gets its face smacked off. <laughs> and I was just like... Sure, I yeah. yeah, I was just like, no. I was always annoyed with that. Yeah, it's disappointing. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping they're not going to potentially just go. Well, Ridley Scott didn't invent the Queen, so we're not going to do that. I hope that's not going to be the case. But um, so we got, it, we've seen a few cool things, and there's a few new things like the the kind of metamorphosis. Uh, did you have a? favorite kill because there's a few interesting kills in this film was there any one in particular that stood out to you that you thought that was awesome um oh, do you know what i honestly off the top of my head right now i can't think of one <laughs> um ah oh, honestly no i can't remember my mind's just gone blank tell me yours let me see if i can if it all uh so, dog I, my memory so i i liked I like the there's my, this one isn't my favorite, but I did like the the um the alien blood, the acid blood killed someone. Oh yes, I thought yeah, that was pretty good with, yeah. with Bjorn. But I think my favorite was probably Tyler's death because we've seen a lot more of the tales in this film. Um, you know the tale in the first few films. I can't remember so much about three, but I definitely know with the first two. You see the tail on the queen being used as an, as an attacking thing, but I don't really think any of the other aliens really use their tail as a weapon. But that gets used quite prominently in this. And with Tyler, gets stabbed up with the tail, lifted high up into the air, getting surrounded yeah. by aliens, really creepy. And then we actually got like, it basically, we saw pretty close up and gnarly, uh, his kind of half his face basically just get destroyed with the inner mouth. I thought that was really, really cool. Yeah, that 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 was really cool. Yeah, um, that's what I mean. See, my head's in such a daze from watching the <laughs> film yesterday. It was just so cool. I can't really remember it. Yeah, that was cool. But um, I did like the like what you mentioned with the you know kind of like the blood, the alien kind of blood death, um, which takes us back to the you know kind of vagina on the wall. The wall <laughs> <was quite laughs> um, 
So uh, when we got to that scene, I was in the cinema. I was like, what what the hell is that? (laughs) That that, that looks like... That looks a little Uh, little like something. Yeah. Like I said, there's... Yeah, they're, you know, kind of... I would say they're trying to keep with kind of like the Giga Mm. kind of sexual imagery stuff with this. But, um, yeah, that was a very um, interesting kill. I did like that kill. Um, yeah. what I thought was really cool about that as well, not so much to kill, but kind of like, um, how the alien kind of births as well, like, because we're calling it basically what it is, yeah. on the wall. But it is because it's like you see kind of like the alien's head start to crown, mm. top of it, don't you? It's and very I, much I like that, just that, yeah, it's like Jesus Christ, what am I watching? <laughs> um. Yeah, that that was quite a scene, and then yeah, obviously I, um, as soon as I saw the tail in my head, I was thinking, oh, that's it, or oh, that's it now. You're just kind of done. Oh yeah. What? Um, yeah, that was cool. What did you think of jumping forward again a little bit here? What did you think about the um, connection to Prometheus? I so I I oh. wasn't expecting that. At all. I mean, I'd, I'd forgotten Ridley Scott right. was producing on this, but we got the little bit of the Prometheus music, and we got we basically got a way to tie in at least Prometheus. Maybe I don't know about Covenant, but at least you know those those films into the series and kind of make it part of them. Because at the moment, Prometheus and Covenant, you know, there's a lot of like assumptions and you know, we we don't really know exactly how they're gonna tie in. Um, but this was a way of basically giving us a little bit of a of a connection and making the black goo from uh, from Prometheus part of the story. So how how did you feel when <coughs> you saw the black goo and the, the mention of, you know, the Prometheus expedition? Um, I thought that was really cool. I thought that was handled really, really well. Um, like when you were asking about callbacks to previous films, um, yeah, I thought that was really good. I thought they handled that really well. It didn't kind of seem to me like they were forcing it in and it wasn't like an eye rolling thing where it's like, oh, yeah, they've got to put that in, haven't they? Because they've got to try to connect it some way. Mm. You know, kind of seemed to me, I thought, like you, I was totally not expecting that at all. No. Um, so I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. I thought that was handled really well, personally. I enjoyed that because Mephius and Covenant might not be the best, um, you know, kind of films ever in the franchise. It's still pretty cool that they're kind of connected, I thought. Yeah, it was a nice, um, it was a nice way of kind of bridging that gap. Um, I think I'll kind of shoot forward now to... Well, we, we, we've alluded, obviously, to the get away from her, you bitch line, which to me is just like having yippee ki yay motherfucker being said by maybe someone else in a later Die Hard sequel. It just, I get it, but it just feels completely unnecessary. Yeah. Um, like I said, with every other little callback and kind of thing like that in the film, I was kind of fine with it. Um, but that one i did i probably never rolled my eyes because i was too busy watching a film but i felt like rolling my eyes because i was like really come on you've done really well so far with trying to make it like what you said kind of like a greatest hits that's what kind of some people are saying if it's a greatest hits then i think it is really really good still either way because i thought it was brilliant film but um yeah that i mean i guess it does make sense in a way because like i read what you were saying earlier that because that guy constantly calls him a bitch throughout mm. the film. He he kind of learns that it's an insult. So, then, so that does kind of make sense, but it doesn't stop it being cheesy in that place, in my yeah. opinion, anyway. Yeah, agreed, <laughs> agreed. Um, I think, like, the last sort of thing to touch on, and then I, I will probably talk <laughs> about something um, we discussed a bit earlier on today that had uh, been seen online... We always had the introduction of the black goo. We got that cool little moment where there's that science experiment showing a rat being 
I mean, it's, that that moment isn't cool, but the rat being destroyed, then injected, then it comes back to life. But the cool moment being they've left the room, and then all of a sudden it mutates. So it's like, hey, this thing can help regenerate, but it actually isn't quite that simple. We then get the next the next stage of mutation which some people online hated i thought was just incredibly creepy even more so on the second viewing which is the introduction of the the, the black goo gets in, injected into k to by herself because she's basically dying she's already pregnant and in the pod all of a sudden her vitals go at, off the off the charts and all of a sudden her pregnancy vastly <laughs> accelerates she gives birth to this enormous egg which already has like a fully formed sort of baby in it that then turns into something that looks like a mix between a xenomorph and an engineer i yeah, found um, that freaky as anything like what was your what was your reaction seeing like that sequence but then also seeing the the creature you know how did you feel about that were you like Oh god, this is cheesy. Were you like Jesus Christ? This is messed up. So, so I had, I had knew from the moment that that character starts to throw up in the toilet straight away. As soon as she was throwing up, I thought she's going to be pregnant. And then when she said she was pregnant, I knew it was going to be some kind of weird <laughs> hybrid alien because she's you know kind of pretty i knew that's what it was kind of you know kind of setting up there's no way they would have showed it otherwise mm. I knew there was going to be some weird human embryo hybrid type thing um yeah when i actually saw what it was at first in the egg i was like the hell is like what the hell <laughs> because it cries you hear it cry don't you like a baby yeah um i was like okay that's weird that's really disturbing but when you actually see it is that is definitely one of the freakiest looking you know, things i've ever seen for quite a long time um it's so uh what's the word it's just so lanky and um out of proportion and yeah oh it's really free it's really really freaky isn't it it's um what's that horror film is a i saw it a few years ago is it hollow man or something like the big tall um, uh, no, not Hollow Man. That's that's something else, isn't it? Um, it, it, it vaguely reminded remember. me of Splice. Oh, Splice. That's that's another one. Yeah, Splice. It yeah, kind of. I think propor proportion wise, it sort of reminded me of that. Um, I mean, yeah, just the the elongated proportions. Like, and and I guess in contrast, whether it's intentional or not, with Rook earlier on, in contrast to that, I thought the effects. You know, because there's got to have been some CGI, I'd imagine. Oh, that's not possible. Good, yeah. But the effects on that, I thought, were brilliant, and just the just the look on the face as well, because it had that engineer look, but then it also just has this horrible smile when it's approaching the characters after just just uh, just being, doing nasties. Um, yeah, I was. Yeah, I was going to say to you, it's that horrible smirk mm. that makes it look so freaky. And creepy um and then i think you know kind of for me the whole kind of thing with the tongue really yeah. freaked me out as well and then you see it going over to the person that births it and i was like is it gonna attack her is it gonna you know kind of try to you know kind of feed from her i guess is the word yeah um, because it's it you know kind of goes up to her and kind of smells her and stuff doesn't it? kind of like the newborn is that what it's called yeah um, from alien resurrection resurrection yeah because that does a similar thing doesn't it to ripley like it does it to the queen smashes the jaw off yeah does it to ripley and i thought it was going to do the same thing but then the next time you see it it's already killed her god damn yeah that yeah, I, I like nasty. that i thought i thought that was really cool and also it's another call back to you know kind of government Covenant and Prometheus, mm. um, which I thought was pretty cool as well. It's just another cool way of incorporating those kind of films. Yeah, it. yeah. It's it's. It, I mean, I I really kind of enjoyed it, definitely. And I think, as I said, doing the re the, the rewatch, I I was kind of thinking like, am I watching it again too soon? Is it all going to seem a little bit too familiar? 
but I, no i was just sort of wrapped up in in the world and then noticing the things which i hadn't noticed the first time around but one of the things that i didn't notice but i saw online and initially when i saw it online i kind of thought okay is this fans clutching at straws but there's footage and that footage does look very very compelling and i would need to i'm not going to go to the cinema and watch it again i'm going to wait for the home till it comes out on, on blu-ray or whatever or disney plus but the director Fede alvarez had said in an interview someone had said oh you know will we see ripley in in alien romulus or any of your other films i think it might have been at the premiere and he'd said something along the lines of uh, there is a ripley connection but i can't talk about that for a few months now marvel are releasing a alien romulus prequel it's called like a one-shot annual i don't know if it's just a one-off comic but it seems to be that there's just a a prequel comic that will explain some things coming out and I wonder if that explains something, because what Eagle Eye viewers have seen, and I think I sent it to you on, on uh, Discord DM, Gruff, two things. One, apparently there's one moment when going through the hangars that you can see down the end of a corridor a shape of... I can't remember the name of the ship, but the escape ship that Ripley uses at the end of Alien. Um, the Conosis or something like that? I can't remember its name. Uh, I think it might be called the Narcissus, or yeah, that sounds in lines. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, and I, I see, I saw the screenshot, and I thought, I mean, there's a grey shape at the end of the corridor. I can't really tell, but, yeah. but at the end of the film, when the Romulus and Remus is hitting the um, the ring of the planet, the ring, the the, the basically the asteroid belt, and it's destroying. On this clip online, that ship is shown kind of being jettisoned out. Now, it's not obvious in the film. I certainly didn't notice it watching the film, which is why I think, could it be CGI? But looking at this clip, I mean, it, it does look like that might be the case, which would then explain so much, uh, such as if they found the wreckage of the Nostromo, why would they not have found Ripley for 50 odd years? Why did it take yeah. Ripley 50 odd years to be found? And then if this is the case that they did find her, but they kept her in cryo, and when she was jettisoned out during the crash, it was because it that, well, it that was why she was then off course because she was just shoved out. I mean, what did you think of the, um, the, the clip on, on Twitter? Yeah, I saw that. Um, and when I started reading into it, it does kind of make a lot of kind of sense, like you said. Um, if it took them, what, 20 years to find the wreckage? Or less than that, maybe. But it took them 50 years or more to actually, you know, kind of find Ripley's ship. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that was kind of, yeah. I mean, I guess by making Romulus and you've got that little kind of shorter gap between the two films, it does then kind of make you think, well, why did it take them so long to find her ship? Yeah, sequel? exactly. So it kind of ties it up, I guess. But it, that that's just another cool little Easter egg type thing, I guess. I thought that was good. It all ties it together quite nicely, it. yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that that is genuine and that's a nice little easter egg that i would have never have noticed otherwise oh jesus wait a minute i've just realized i got a message saying that my computer's running out of space so i was trying to look at it at the same time and just realized i've covered your face um <laughs> i'll see if i can do some tech wizardry in the edit um it's but, fine now i want to see that oh <laughs> but i think that's also you I know just we, we've we've come to the end of uh, we've come to the end of discussing Alien Romulus. I think I'm going to reevaluate my eight out of ten. Why well, I think I gave it to a to an eight point five out of ten because I really did, I really did enjoy it, especially on a on a second viewing. Um, Gruff, what would you give Alien Romulus out of ten? Um, so I'd already come up with in my head. I mean, I've only seen it once. I would love to go and watch it again. I'm probably going to have to wait for it to come out. Um at home to purchase it uh but i would give it 8.5 i 
as well. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I was tempted to go nine, but I think that's a little bit too high. So, yeah, <laughs> I would agree with that. And I've only seen it once. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was bloody brilliant. It's not perfect, but it's almost, almost it's perfect. almost perfect. Well, yeah, I thought it was brilliant. Gruff, thank you very much for um, for giving me your time to do this um, this spoiler show. Um, we will be we we've had discussions, and I'm really just crap at keeping on top of things. But I think we're we're fast approaching spooky season, and so I think we are going to be doing the long overdue return of the horror face off. Um, so I've reached out to you. I've also reached out to Crimson Mel. Um, and I think what we're going to look to do in October, we'll, we'll look at a date where everyone is free. If we have to pre-record it, we can. We can. Um, but if we can do it live, we can. But we'll do a horror face-off, but I think it's got to be uh, horror killers. You know, your Michael Myers, your Jason Voorhees. Yeah. Um, yeah. Freddy Krueger. Exactly. Never face. Oh yes, oh yes, all the big hitters. Chucky. Excellent, excellent. So yeah, oh yeah, Chucky. I mean I still need to see uh series three. I don't know if that's on um on British TV yet. Uh I did see an advert for that, I think, the other day. So I believe it might be coming soon to Sky, whatever oh, channel okay. it's on. I will have to keep an I'm eye sure out I did. for that. Um Right, Gruff, we're going to wrap this up. So thank you very much. Where can people find you um, on socials? Uh, so if you go onto Twitter, uh, look me up, the Gruff 999 um, We're usually on there quite a bit. I don't generally post that much, but I'm always up for a bit of a chat, especially if it's about horror. So Nice. Because um, I don't really have any close friends, personal friends that are actually into horror that much, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more of an online thing. You know, like a friend in between <laughs> us. So, oh, horror friends. friends, online horror friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the gruff nine nine nine. Excellent. Thank you very much, dude. And um, yeah, people check out um, Twitter is ministry underscore horror. Uh, occasionally I put up the TikTok links from the shows, which is ministry dot of dot horror. Um, and we will catch you again. Um, I, I, I don't know I don't know what my schedule is of doing a, a live show this week. I think I'm pretty much busy all weekend, so it'll probably be live shows returning next week. All right, that's it. We'll catch you later. Laters. See you later.